Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to beautiful Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan and uh, it's a sad day today. Today is the last day I'm going to be flying into this location particularly because the people we fly for are heading back to their home country for a year. So anyways, yeah, we're heading out of here. We're going to go on a 40 minute flight up to Moonbill and uh, it's going to be a really nice day. All right, here we are in Papua New Guinea. It's just above Australia if you're not familiar. We are the blue dot and we are going to be flying way up here in this area, just about the border of Indonesia. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, fuel is on, igniter's on, fuel pump on, and low start. Introduce my fuel over 14% NG. Watching the NG come up over 30, looking at the ITT, watching it go over 500. And just watching the rate, now we're up to 50 on the NG. Now my ITT is coming back down. That lets me know that the start is done. So when your IT peaks out and then it starts coming back down, then you can release your starter and turn off your igniters and stuff. All right, generator on. Up forward, alternator on, aux bus on, our V2 tracker so our home base can track us. This particular runway is 590 meters long and a 7% slope. And out at Moonbill, I think it's like a 6% slope and probably over 600 meters. It's pretty long. All right, so this is our weight and balance, or not a weight and balance app, but just our load and fare calculator. Uh, I've got minus 76 kgs for my seats because I don't have six seats on board. I'm 85 with my bag. We're at 1,330 pounds. And we've got 148. And our aircraft today is 2,017 kgs. So the penalty, takeoff penalty out of here is 150 kgs, which means that I can still put on another 360 kgs available if I wanted to. So I've got quite a bit of fuel because I've fueled up for out to Moonville, back, and then all the way back to Garoka. All right, fuel caps are good. Selectors, our fuel caps we already checked, our selectors. I'm going to turn Betty off for this takeoff. She'll be yelling at us. And um, we're going to put down 10,000 feet for our flight out to Moonbill. So I forgot to check. Our all-up weight here today is going to be, or actually I put in 159 on my, we'll do 160. And it says 6140, this says 6130, so we're within 10 more or less. So that's really, really close. That's good. So 61. So we'll rotate at 58 and 68 for our VREF. So 68 if we had to come back in and 58 for our rotate speed. Lap set indicated and verified at 20. Our trim, go full right rudder trim and get my elevator trim where I'd like it and call up Dang. Dang 6538 November Tango Kilo Taxi. All right, I guess we'll have to call them after takeoff. All right, if we do need to stop on this runway, I'm gonna be at least uh, 35 knots in between one, two and a half cones. If I'm not at 35 knots, or if I have to stop for something else, full reverse, heavy braking, laps up, cut up, pull off, and shut off. Master's off, crack my door. If we're going off, I'm gonna go up to the right, the left, it just drops off to the river down there, so. We'll go off into some trees after takeoff, pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather, otherwise cut off, pull off, and shut off. 80 full flaps, emergencies, masters, crack my door. Ignition is on, landing light, and bypass. We'll do SAR after takeoff. We're 29 degrees, so 30 degrees, and we're at 4,000. Correction, 3,000. 1420, so 1370. 1370, rotate 58. All right, ignition condition flap 20, fuel on harnesses. Checklist complete. Oh, gotta get my flight plan in here. All right. All right, 35 knots by that. 1370, rotate 58. 1370. There's 35, continuing. Looking for 58. There's 58. 
And Air Force, get up to 740 on the ITT and climb out at 73. Seventy three is going to be our best angle of climb. It's going to get us the most altitude in the shortest amount of distance. So just getting up over trees, over mountains, and whatnot. Now that we're up at a safe or altitude, we're just going to we're just going to pitch over and start getting our speed up to eighty five knots. So I do have a lot of fuel on board right now, so I wouldn't say I'm heavy, but I'm heavier. So just for my climb out and stuff, I'm just going to follow this uh, valley up here. You can follow along with this. Right over 85 knots, I dropped it down to 10 degrees and over 90 and climbing will go zero degrees of flaps. Being a little bit of back pressure as the nose wants to just drop down. Bring our prop back to 2000 RPM. And someone in another video was asking, am I actually changing like the engine RPM or just the prop RPM, and it's just the prop. Like the engine is still spinning at like, at like 38,000 RPM, I believe. I think it's 38,800 or something, I don't know. Somebody can correct me. I'm not Google. And um, this is just changing the pitch of the propeller, so it sounds different and it's going slower, but it's just the prop. So 2,000 RPM and 720 on the ITT. We can turn our landing light off, bypass, and igniters off, and we'll just pitch for our cruise climb. Get over here on my big map page. Let's see if we can get a hold of Madang now. Madang, Madang, 6538 November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Madang. November Tango Kilo departed 40. Tracking 275 on climb, not above 10,000. Estimating a moon build time 201 POB. Moon Tango Kilo, second destination and estimate. Destination moon bill. Estimate time 20 next hour, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Wakimurai. So one thing that I set up specifically in my own aircraft, everybody, all the pilots fly a little bit different. One thing that I like doing is rather than putting my train awareness on this, I have it on this little inset down here. So you can see a bunch of red and yellow. Red, you're dead. Yellow, it's caution. It's basically the train is within basically under like 100 feet up to 1,000 feet. So just because it's yellow does not mean that you're safely going across something if it's um, yeah, anything with instrument, you're not going to be doing that because that's too low, but it does give you a nice indication as you're climbing out, hey, I'm already at yellow on the, you know, the hilltops in front of me. I know I'm already going to clear it. You can obviously look too, but there's a nice little indicator as well. The reason I don't put it on this big map here is because as you're coming in to land at a bush location, basically your whole map would just turn red and or just a bunch of yellow and red you just it's really hard to see exactly the little you know valleys and stuff so that's why i have it on my little one only all right now that we've got our sar done i can do my last checklist here all right so it says it has a little bit of wind now it's still like a light overcast but still with some blue skies i got the weather report earlier they gave it to me in a piece of paper as well the blue skies lots of clouds some um, some clouds on ridges, no rain, open, and it rained a lot last night. So, there you go. That's how we get our, <laughs> that's how we get our weather here. So, just looking ahead at this map, let me get my autopilot on. We're well clear of anything and any mountains, but there we go. Got a thousand foot to go. That's why this little thing up here is flashing. It's letting me know that I am within 1,000 feet. So let me just set up my altitude select and vertical speed, and that way I'll level off. So as you can see, there's just a lot of like taller mountains right in here. So more than likely the clouds are gonna be at least probably 1,000 foot over top of that altitude. So those are like right around 10,000 feet right there. So what I can do that will for sure, for sure work is I can do the low route all the way down here and I think it's around in this area right here. Actually, nope, it's one valley over. It's over here somewhere. 
Moonville is. So, on days like this where there is a decent amount of clouds on top of all the ridges, you can always count on having nice clear valleys and go down the low route if you wanted to. But just to conserve fuel, I usually try to go up as high as I can. Just because for one, it cools off the uh, cockpit and it definitely does save fuel on the long route. So I have 40 minutes out to Moonville, 40 minutes back where I just left, and then another hour and five minutes, I believe, back to Garoka. I should be getting back, I think, probably around 3 p.m. today because we had kind of a late start. Yeah, so here we are, like I said, Telefoman is just right over top of those mountains. You left him in, been to all these different places, Durandman, just down over top of the next mountain ridge over there. And uh, we're heading up here to Moonville today. So it looks like we should be able to wiggle through some clouds right in here, staying at 10,000, and then we'll start our descent down into Moonville shortly. The first thing we need to do before we start our descent into Moonville is I need to know what my pattern altitude is going to be. The elevation is 3,500 feet. Or correction, 3,050 feet. So I hit my flight plan page, head over to my altitude, and whoops. Put in 4,000. Let's do 100 feet. Come on down to the vertical speed and put it at, we'll do 900 feet per minute. And by putting it at 900, it's gonna probably take about a thousand actually to get to it. All right, looks like we have like a nice little channel right here. We're just gonna go ahead and turn with my autopilot, come back over here to my maps page so you can see where we are. By setting up our top of descent, it puts a nice little top of descent mark right on my map. And Betty will let me know, hey, top of descent, it's time to go down. And then we'll start heading on down. So I'm expecting, because there is a higher area of mountains right here, you can see that we're going through in this area. Once I get past this, another 10 miles or so, I'm guessing that all of the clouds up to Moonville are just going to drop down because that whole valley right there is all just super low. It goes all the way down to the river. So I'm expecting that, like the clouds right now are right at 10,000 feet, but maybe a couple lower. We'll just kind of have to wiggle our way through them. But like I said, once we get past Elliptiman and another 10 miles or so up, then it should just completely open all the way up and just be on the ridge tops. So a few of you guys have wondered like, are we flying VFR or IFR here? What do you like? Because it's different than the United States. So we file IFR flight plans on all of our flights here. And we do kind of a mix of IFR and VFR. We don't get IFR clearances like you would in the United States. You file the plan, which legally allows you to do it. And yeah, looking down the valley now, it's completely all open. So. Um, anyways, so we file it, but it, we, we're still kind of like going in and out because now my descent's gonna have to be a VFR descent once I get up there because there's too many mountains around. So at that point, we basically revert back to all of our VFR rules, but we also have special rules here. It's not just like your VFR rules. When the, the terrain rises over 5,000 feet, you have to be clear of clouds and inside of the ground at all times. So you have your VFR rules, but then you have extra rules that like supersede those, and then you have your IFR rules. So yeah, it is a, it is very confusing at first, for sure. And especially if you're seeing what we're doing and then you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that's why. So hopefully that made it clear as much for you guys. All right, looks like the whole valley here is nice, wide, and open. So what I'm planning on doing, because Moonville is actually, there's a ridge right here that you cannot see. So I'm going to fly probably up this, and if I can jump over into this side of the ridge, up into there, I will. Otherwise, what I'm just going to have to do is come up over here, and then there's a few gaps along this ridge right here that I'll have to go through. So we'll see. I'm pretty close to my top of descent now. 
I think I'm actually just going to start, even though it's not 900 feet per minute, I'm going to go down probably 600 feet just so I can start getting down because there is quite a bit of clouds in this valley and I want to make sure that I don't get stuck on top for any reason. And also so I don't have to do like a 2,500 foot percent <laughs> foot descent into the moon bill area. Can't talk today. I'll go ahead and set up my altitude select at 4,100. That's my pattern altitude and it puts a nice little cyan arc on the map lets me know where I'm going to get there. So it looks like it's going to get there just a bit past. So I know I need to go down to 700 feet per minute if I want to get there at that altitude. I'm just going to stay kind of more in the middle of the valley rather than trying to squeeze through some little holes close to the edge because I can't see. I know that the valley is going to be open in the middle. So I'd rather just swing over to the middle of the valley because it's going to be, you know, full up open and it is. So we're going to make kind of a slight right hand turn here. And once we get down to the ridges, then we can see about jumping over into that last valley. All right, we are seven minutes out. So I'm going to put my fuel selectors back on, check my brakes. My TAWS is inhibited already. Check my aux page. We're at 5,980 now. So by the time we get there, do the pattern, we'll be at 5,900 straight. So our VREF is going to be 67 knots. For one four miles to run now. And let me bring up my strip chart again. Oh, we're going to be landing on runway 1-2. We're going to be coming in more from like the east-southeast flying overhead, entering into a right downwind, and turning final, I think right around 3,600 feet is where I turn final, because it's a little bit further out, 35 to 3,600. It's a 6% slope, and it's 620 meters long, so pretty long. We're gonna run, land on runway one, two, so I hit my OBS right here, and turn this to runway one, two. Now put a nice little line right there, taking up my whole map, which makes it super easy to see the direction of my runway. So because there's mountains and it's not always this nice little rectangle box, and you're flying to this ridge and this ridge and this ridge, you can quickly just see if you're parallel, if you're perpendicular with your runway. It's just one nice little hack. And you could use that anywhere. I mean, if you're going into some like place out in Oklahoma in the middle of nowhere and there's there's no trees, there's no nothing, and it's kind of hard to see where the runway is or if you're behind you, you can always set it up on your OBS as well. All right, autopilot's off. It looks like I can see right down into the next little valley that I need to, so I'm just gonna start my descent a little bit faster now. Our landing light on and give an area call. All stations have moved by 128.5, Kodiak, November Tango Echo, Niner Miles to the southeast, passing 6,400. Circuit time, Moon Bill 17. All right, so at this location, there's going to be a little hill off of my left on my final. That is going to be my safer bore point. And what I mean by safe bore point is, yes, I might be able to go around after that, but at that point, I'm calling committed, and that is when I can safely go around. So it, the video doesn't really quite depict on like how close mountains are. And a lot of people are like, oh, it looks like you could easily go around. Well, you have to keep in mind like the weight of the aircraft and how much you're loaded, how much fuel you have on board, where the winds are coming from. That all determines on where you call your safe abort point. So if I have tailwinds or things like that, it also depicts on where I call my safe abort point. Again, it's called a safe abort point, not a, oh crap, I'm screwed abort point. So, lights and inlet. We're just four miles out. I'm going to go ahead and call up my SAR now that we're in the circuit. 6538 November Tango Kilo in the circuit. Moonville cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo Moonville, South Terminated. November Tango Kilo, thanks. All right. All station Moonville 1285. November Tango Kilo is in the circuit. Moonville. All right, we're just going to hop over this little last ridge and then basically be entering into a right downwind. So bring my torque back from my cruise. 
And just to slow me down, I'm going to bring it back to around 600 foot-pound of torque. Push my prop forward under 140 knots, get our bypass on, and do first 10 degrees of flaps below 138 knots. So the dial looks really nice. Looking at the smoke over there, it looks like the winds are kind of going up that way. And right now I have one knot of tailwind, so the winds pretty much are calm here, which is really, really nice. So we talked about our abort. Actually, we didn't. At that hill, power up, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73, right hand turn out, reset our torque up to, our ITT up to 740. Now I'm down to 4,100 feet. All right, SAR is done, prop and harness is done, and abort and emergencies are completed. So yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of wind going up this way, but overall, looks nice. They had rain here last night. That beep is just let me know I'm within 200 feet of my 4,100 feet. We'll do 20 degrees of flaps once we're beam the numbers. 500. All right, there's our pattern altitude, and there's our beam, our number, so 20 degrees of flaps. We'll shoot for 3,800 feet by that next ridge up in front of us, the tree. We went 67, 87, or 67, 77, and 87. 87 on downwind. A pitch for my airspeed and power for altitude. There's 87, there's my 38, 60, so I'm just a little bit low for where I want to be. I'll just hold this altitude. This doesn't really have much of a base, it's just kind of like a turning into a final. I go all the way up to this ridge right here, and then just kind of do like a turning from downwind into a final. Here is a point I turn. 500. All right, looks like we have three knots off the head, or off the nose. There's my 3600. And we want 67 knots, full flaps, and checklist complete. We'll just hug this hill all the way in. We're looking for 67 knots for final. There's 67 knots. Five hundred. We're just gonna go really close to this hill here because there's no wind really to speak of today. Once we get past this, this is our committed. Now my descent will have to go down a little bit steeper. I'll probably get tailwinds. All right, we're now committed. I got four knot tailwind. Kind of a bit fast, but not willing to have an extra three knots. I'm gonna land a little bit to the right because it's soft. There we go. It's a nice and firm today. I'm actually bringing tools out to this location here so that they can actually work on the runway because. It's really, really soft at the end down there. So anyways, guys, this is Moonville. I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. And consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you guys enjoy watching. Put out videos every Saturday and Wednesday as well, usually, as long as I have content for you guys. So be sure to check out some other videos. I've got a bunch of good stuff on here. So thanks again, guys. Have a good one. All right, just shut down, turn off my air blowers, my lights.
fuel pump, aux bus, generator, alternator. Make sure my throttle is all the way back. Below 585 on the ITT, go ahead and cut off. Below 38%, go to feather. And then shut off my fuel on the up, on the up wing. So anyways, guys, thanks again. Have a good one.